I'm Stephen Hicks. Our guest today is Professor Ariel John, who's the Upton Teaching Fellow in the Department of Economics at Beloit College. And Professor John was here to speak with us on culture and entrepreneurship with special reference to uh, Trinidad, her, her native country. Uh, in your talk, you gave us some striking statistics about the relationship between culture and entrepreneurship. Uh, you started with a, a breakdown by ethnicity of the various segments of Trinidadian society and then contrasted that with the participation in self-employment and entrepreneurship. What, what were those uh, numbers like? Okay, so Trinidad is an interesting country ethnically. Um, the two majority segments of the population are Indians, right, who are de descendants from Indian indentured servants, um, and they comprise 40% of the population. Uh, African Trinidadians comprise about 37%, so they're about equal. Okay. Um, and beyond that, about a fifth of the country, or 21% of Trinidadians, report themselves to be mixed, and usually that implies they're mixed between Indian and African. Um, and there's a small minority of individuals who are European descendants, also Chinese and Syrian Lebanese, and they comprise 2% of the population. So okay. they're the smallest group in the population. Now, when we look at self-employment statistics, we find that within that minority group, 35, about 36% of those individuals are self-employed, yeah. they're business owners. Um, the next group with the biggest category of business owners are the Indians. I would say about 25% of those individuals are considered self-employed. Uh, mixed individuals, perhaps about 20% of that group are self-employed. Mm -hmm. And blacks in Trinidad have a below average self-employment rate at about 16%. Mm -hmm. So that's the breakdown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your uh, area of investigation is about the, uh, the effects of ethnic culture, possibly racial culture on these widely varying self-employment entrepreneurial rates. You also spoke about entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship is complicated in some respects, but you broke it down into two basic moments that you call the Kersnerian moment and the Schumpeterian moment. What, uh, what are those? Okay, so obviously the decision to become an entrepreneur involves many factors um, over time and place. Uh, for Israel Kersner, the defining moment of being an entrepreneur is the moment when you discover an opportunity, right? And usually that happens in a surprise fashion. You are going about your way and suddenly you realize there are needs that people want met and you know exactly how to do that. Mm. So for Kersner, the defining moment is identifying the, the opportunity. Okay. So he's emphasizing the cognitive elements in entrepreneurship. Absolutely. Okay. Seeing. Yes. Um, for Joseph Schumpeter, what defines an entrepreneur is the doing. Okay, so for, Schump for Schumpeter, exploiting the opportunity, actually bringing a product to market, right, or changing how a supply chain works or changing some aspect of production, mm -hmm. that is what make, makes you an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Doing something creative, destroying the old way of doing things. Um, the doing aspect of entrepreneurship is what Schumpeter focuses on. So there appears to be two moments of entrepreneurship, okay. the moment when you identify the opportunity and the moment when you actually exploit the opportunity. Okay. So the next question is about culture and those two moments of entrepreneurship. So trying to figure out how or how well or how well not a culture fosters the identification of opportunities and the exploiting right, of those opportunities. You also uh, uh, had a definition of culture or at least an explication of what culture is. What, what is culture? Yeah, it, culture is one of those words that's sort of ambiguous yeah. and hard to, hard to make um, concrete because it's so abstract. But I think there's a very good definition of culture from the anthropologist Clifford Gertz. And he refers to culture as a historically transmitted pattern of meanings, a system of inherited conceptions, right? Okay. So culture is essentially defined as the shared meanings individuals have about the objects and about the people and about the actions in their lives, in okay. their lives. They share meanings together and those okay. differ 
from culture to culture. All right, so then we would be able to ask what meaning, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneurship has, to what extent it's shared, and to what extent there's a history right, within a group of people. And those would be the connections that we want to make. Okay, now to come to uh, Trinidad then in particular, mm -hmm. you had three uh, uh, hypotheses about the intersection. One was about the Kersnerian entrepreneurship, the identification of opportunities, and how that is in Trinidadian culture. Uh, what is your hypothesis there? Well, my hypothesis there is that Trinidadians across all of the ethnic cultures are fairly prolific at identifying opportunities, right? Okay. And I, I confirm this by doing interviews with Trinidadians and I sat them down, I asked them, you know, tell me about your job, what's your dream job? And instead of people identifying opportunities, you know, to be to be technicians, to be doctors, to be educators, people identified specific entrepreneurial mm. activities. So they saw themselves as being self-employed one day, and not only did they know that they wanted to, um, to own trucks and rent trucks or start restaurants or start hairstyling businesses, they had actual plans okay. for how they were going to achieve these businesses. Um, they had a diverse number of reasons but what really struck me was that they were good at discovering um, gaps where consumers had demands that were not being met. They were okay. very good at identifying opportunities. And this was across all of the different ethnic cultures yeah. that you had yes. identified earlier. Okay. With respect to a uh, uh, moment right, in entrepreneurship, what's your hypothesis there for Trinidad? Well, clearly, according to the statistics I mentioned right. earlier, the ethnic cultures are not equal exploiters. Okay. okay. So, according to the data, the white Chinese, Syrian, Lebanese, Trinidadians are the best exploiters, and the blacks are not necessarily um, good exploiters. Indians are sort of seen as the, the emerging business class. Okay. Now, there can be several cultural reasons for that, which, when I looked at the history of the di different ethnic groups, I realized there could be some historical cultural reasons for these disparities. Um, whites, Chinese, Syrian, Lebanese, to some extent, trans brought their cultures with them from, from where they came from, from China, from Syria. Um, they brought with them their entrepreneurial attitudes. Not only that, once they arrived in Trinidad, they kept close kinship ties and they formed business business associations. Mm. So an individual who belongs to that ethnic group has a support system, um, has a group of people who are aware of what it takes to be a good exploiter, right? They have technical advice, mm. they keep their kinship network close. Um, that's fairly true for Indian Trinidadians as well. But when it comes to black Trinidadians, they don't have those close kinship ties. They never developed them um, across their history. Was that because they were largely brought in as slaves? They were. Okay, yes. and that destroys kinship that, connections. That definitely destroys yes. their kinship connections. Um, over the years, blacks, as opposed to Indians and Chinese, have given different meanings to certain jobs. So public service and, and um, education jobs, professional jobs, are highly valued in, in, in the African culture in Trinidad. So an individual who's trying to climb the social ladder, um, make something out of themselves, you know, um, chase prestige, is not likely to see, um, is not likely to, ex to use business to exploit those dreams. Okay. They're likely to, to, to become more educated, just um, avoid business altogether. Right. Professional jobs and yeah. established institutions, mm -hmm. right? We also uh, mentioned uh, some dimensions of uh, dependence versus mm -hmm. uh, independence yeah. in post-colonial history. Trinidad became a country you mentioned in 1962, mm -hmm. and so this is within a couple of generations that we have a kind of a new culture, but right. nonetheless, dependence and independence traits right. are not equally distributed and so on. So what are the issues there? So, well, I believe um, coming out of colonialism, 
more people started to see business opportunities, you know, as something that they could do, they could take charge, they could aspire to be anything they wanted to be, which is why I think across cultures, Trinidadians are opportunity identifiers, but they're not necessarily, in terms of the ethnic groups, all equal opportunity exploiters for these dependence reasons. So blacks and Indians coming out of independence were more dependent on the state, even after Trinidad was not a colony I anymore. See. There was social programs to try to get them to become businessmen, to take care of them, and I think that that just decreased their incentive to try to make it on their own. Okay. Um, within those families, living with your family well into adulthood and relying on your parents for money, that's still seen as normal in those, in those ethnic groups. Yeah. And so again, that diminishes the incentive to become an entrepreneur and and to make one's own way through life. Yeah. yeah. So these cultures of dependence okay. transmit across generations and determine who actually, even though they may have ideas, who actually feels a sort of real need to exploit an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And those that are more dependent don't feel that need as strongly. Yeah. Uh, it's striking statistics on difference in entrepreneurship participation across ethnic groups and racial groups, mm -hmm. also according to degree of education. Mm -hmm. But you also had a breakdown by sex, and there was a marked difference in participation between males and females yeah. at, in all ethnic groups and all levels of education. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on the, the, the gender or sex differentiation? So, so there's gender differences in employment um, across cultures, across nations, across time. Yeah. Those gender differences across jobs, right? So not just self-employed versus employed. Most fields, you, you'll see that, right. that, that, that choice gap. Um, and I'm not clear what the reason is, mm. but I do think sometimes women have different goals. Right, there are sometimes they have, they have more family goals, whereas men may have um, they may aspire to be businessmen or or to be very involved in their jobs. Mm -hmm. And I think that's sort of I think there is a fundamental difference when it comes to um, the the actual choices men and women decide. But the male female role. rates in Trinidad aren't different from male female rates in other I cultures don't think and that places, they are. right? It's and pretty, so forth. Even for the U.S., I don't think that they are. Okay. Yeah. There may be a higher percentage yeah. of women um, becoming entrepreneurs in the U.S., but women here are also generally more self-sufficient mm -hmm. and have a higher income. Okay. Yeah. Toward the end of your talk, uh, after emphasizing various elements of uh, culture, you said your research shows an importance of institutions, right, of, of certain sorts, uh, in fostering or or squelching, right, entrepreneurial participation rates. Uh, what what do you mean by institutions, and in the Trinidad context, how does that fit fit, fit into your uh, your research? Well, so when I talk about institutions, I'm talking about the formal rules of the game within right. a society. Okay, so the rules that tell you what you're allowed to do, where you're allowed to participate, and not allowed to participate. So I'm not really talking about informal rules, I'm more talking about formal, official rules within okay. Trinidad society. Is the, let me, sorry, is the distinction in informal rules, would that be on the culture side? Yes. And formal rules, that's institutions? Yes, okay. formal rules refer to norms. Okay. Um, so the, the formal rules, the institutions operating in Trinidad, certainly apply to everyone, right, of all ethnic groups in Trinidad. These are rules that are on the books. Um, they don't apply to blacks any more than they apply to whites or Indians. Um, and so there are institutions in Trinidad and Tobago that I believe, and I think economic theory would predict, that are beneficial to entrepreneurial identification and exploitation in the first place. Um, in Trinidad and Tobago, private property rights are respected and enforced. Mm. So if an individual decides they see an opportunity and they want to follow through with it, they can purchase a piece of land, they can purchase a building, um, they don't have to worry about it being confiscated. Mm. Private property rights are pro perhaps not as strong as in more developed nations, but still, individuals, if they wanted to own property, they could. 
Okay. Also in Trinidad, I think the rule of law is respected. So hmm. individuals aren't treated differentially. And so I think um, in Trinidad, as economic theory predicts, this, in this incentivizes people to, to be comfortable with coming up with business ideas and going after these ideas because they know that if they do face the law at any point in their business dealings, they won't be treated um, unfairly right. or differentially. Okay, so the law is knowable and it's consistent, yes. right? And so people can factor that in and that encourages entrepreneurship. Definitely. Nice. All right. Well, fascinating set of issues. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was great to talk at Rocker College.